We're in Sonoma to speak to David Bell, Tracy McClendon, and their son, Kashiel McClendon. They were living in a rented home in a vineyard in Kenwood when they realized they had to flee for their lives. If you have time to prepare, grab the most important things, which I would say would be a phone, because then you because then you can communicate to your friends, see if they're okay, and their family. Make sure that they can get out as well. Also, you have your friends that will support you with your phone. You can also broadcast on Facebook or something, which my mom did, so her friends and other people could get exact, could know exactly what was happening on the day of that fire. We managed to get out of the house in time, but everything we owned is gone. And uh, we managed to grab my cat, one of our cats, and one of our, and our dog, but everything we own is gone. We had about 10 minutes to get off property before the fire started to jump to our house. Um, and the road was completely smoky. There were trees down everywhere. And we managed to get down to Highway 12. We see that people are turning, that people are evacuating. They're turning towards Sonoma we decided to go down Highway 12 to Santa Rosa. And that's when we saw. As we're driving down Highway 12, there's multiple cars stopped in front of us. And it turns out a tree branch had come down and was obstructing the roadway. I tell Tracy, I'm like, I'm, I, we gotta, I gotta help. And I'm like, I wouldn't love you if you didn't. So we pull off to the side of the road Half a dozen people had exited their vehicles, were trying to clear the roadway because these are huge branches that are coming down that are obscuring, you know, vehicles. People are running over branches, they're getting, you know, flat tires or have to pull them off the road. So we, we get as much of the debris out as we can. It's nothing but open fields down Highway 12 up until you get to like Oakmont. If you're stuck and there's flames on both sides of the road, and then we're trapped going back, like we wouldn't be, I'm like, honey, I love you, but we have to go. I get back in the car, I continue driving, and as we progress down Highway 12, I'm looking, okay, are we far enough? Only to see that on both sides of Highway 12, there continues to be spot fire here, spot fire there. We get down to Calistoga. Now, on the other side of the hill, you can see the glow from, I think it's the nun's fire over there. And it, it's intense. And I'm like, you need to call your friend because um, Tracy's friend lives in right off Calistoga Road. And I'm thinking if it comes up and over the hill, it's going to sweep right through the middle Rincon area. So she's furiously dialing people. And I'm thinking to myself, we still need to keep going. I'm like, Kenwood is on fire. You need to get out. Get out, get out now. Kenwood is burning. I kept saying it over and over again. Kenwood is burning. Leave. So we continually drive. As we're driving, I tell my son who's sitting in the seat next to me, I'm like, boo boo, I'm gonna need you to be brave. Things are gonna be really difficult in the coming days. And I really need you not to freak out. I need you to be strong. And I need you to, you know, help us through this because our life is gonna change. He's like, I understand. Kid is incredibly self-sufficient. He's, he's incredibly strong. So to lighten the mood, I then tell him, and at this moment, we're gonna teach you a life lesson. When it's 1.30 in the morning and you have no place to go, where do you go? You don't go to Denny's necessarily, you end up at Denny's. You leave a club, it's two o'clock in the morning, you want food, you're not especially picky about the quality. I apologize to Denny's if they're watching this, I'm sure your menu has changed, but we don't visit regularly enough to know. 
Um, but I teach my son, this is what, this is when Denny's comes in handy. We walk through the door. I'm wearing pajamas. Sheila's wearing pajamas. David's wearing pajamas. I don't know what we must have looked like when we walked through that door because at one o'clock in the morning, there were people at Diddy's because, hey, 24 hours. Everyone stopped and looked at us because we must have had the look of utter desolation on our face. And the waitress came over to us and I went, we just lost our entire house. We just lost everything. What do you say at that moment besides, do you want a table? <laughs> so we're sitting at a table and all I could think is like, okay, focus on something you need to eat. It's going to be a long day. They had no soup. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I didn't want any pancakes. I didn't want any French toast. I didn't want a burger. I didn't want anything but a comforting bowl of soup at that point. Uh, we got to show some French fries to try to get him to eat something. He didn't eat. We asked him if we could bring our cat inside. They're like, bring your cat inside. We left the dog in the car because she was completely just freaking. So we left her in the car. And we're sitting there and I can't think of anything. Um, well, it's not exactly being scared. It's something that I can tell my kids, if I do have kids, later on in life that, hey, you think that's worse? Well, I lost my house in the nun's fire. Me and my mom and my dad when I was 11. Was I 11 at the time? Yeah. No, I was 12. Was I really 11? Okay. 